modern collectible gold, or gold bullion? Which should you choose? Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. The question to buy collectible gold versus gold bullion depends on a lot of factors. Are you a collector or are you just stacking for weight? I think stackers inevitably turn towards collecting on some level. For the sake of this discussion, I'm only talking about modern collectible gold. I will do a video on pre-33 gold, hopefully later this month. What are bullion coins? Bullion produced specifically for investment purposes comes in three distinct forms. Bars, rounds, and coins. Worldwide, the most popular form for private investors is bullion coins. This type of coin is different from regular currency because it is not meant for circulation as payment for goods and stores. Among the reasons for the attractiveness of bullion coin is portability. Because each coin is manufactured to a standard weight, gold, silver, or platinum bullion can easily be stored, transported, or exchanged for currency. The accepted standardization of purity is also attractive to investors. Some of the most popular gold bullion coins in the world are the American Eagle, the South African Krugerrand, and the Canadian Maple Leaf. Because national governments issue bullion coins struck at official mints, there is a level of comfort and security about the origin upon purchase. They also feature the year the coin was struck, beneficial for tracking the source of the investment and helping with future authentication. Gold bullion isn't just gold coins produced by government mints. It also includes rounds and bars produced by private mints. Both government mints and private mints produce collectible gold coins that don't fall under the category of regular bullion. For the sake of this topic though, we're going to focus on government mints because there isn't that much collectible gold produced by private mints. Collectible gold coins will have dramatically lower mintages, different designs, and most will have a special finish. Collectible coins often come with a certificate of authenticity, otherwise known as a COA, which gives a brief description of the significance of the collectible piece, the mintage, and the purity and weight. The distinction of collectible gold to regular bullion lies with the design. Most government bullion don't change their designs, but collectible gold coins typically have a one and done kind of design. It isn't reproduced year after year. As for the mintages, they can be as low as a couple hundred or as high as a hundred thousand. Regular gold bullion is hardly a bad buy. Its price is tied to spot, so you can expect pricing to be near what spot price is. It has a reliable design, size, and finish. You know what you're going to get. That being said, don't expect regular bullion to grow year over year in value unless spot price grows. Gold bullion won't exceed that far beyond spot price. While it is reliable, gold bullion isn't really special. Typically the same design, year after year, with a different date stamped on them. Some bars like PAMP aren't stamped with a date, so one doesn't know when it was actually minted. This reliability and repetition can bore people. It does with me. That's why I opt for collectible coins in my stack. Should you get collectible gold? My answer is yes, but like everything else, this isn't a black and white topic. If you want a collectible gold coin that will grow in value, you need to look at a few factors. How many will be minted? What is the design? Does it have a special finish? Is this release about a special historical subject? And is that subject popular? You want a low mintage coin with a unique design. It really doesn't hurt to have a nice finish to it. If it covers a previous coin release or some historical subject, the more popular the subject was, the better chance you have with this collectible coin being popular too. There are plenty of collectible gold releases with low mintages, a really unique design, and a proof finish, which fall flat in terms of collectability and value. They aren't popular, and their value is basically tied to the value of gold within it. This is typically because the subject of the design is not popular, or the design itself just sucks. When buying gold and silver, I like to look at mintages. Lower mintage means it could be more collectible in the future. 
I know that this is a bullion coin, but this is one reason I advocate for the American Gold Buffalo over the American Gold Eagle. Look at the mintages for every year. Basically every year since 2006, the Gold Buffalo is minted significantly less than the Gold Eagle, but it's priced the same. I'm going to get the item where there is fewer out there and pay the same price as the ones that are excessively minted. I apply the same logic when it comes to modern collectible gold. Next is the design. Is it a great design or does it commemorate something? In 2016, the US Mint released their Centennial Gold Coin Collection, consisting of a gold Mercury dime, a gold Standing Liberty quarter, and a gold Walking Liberty half dollar. I really enjoy the Mercury dime and the Walking Liberty designs, and the US Mint knocked these designs out of the park. These coins don't have a special finish to them, but that really doesn't matter to me. What collectible coins do I recommend? I can't really tell you because collecting coins is dependent upon the collector's preference. What you like, I might not like, and vice versa. It all comes down to what makes you happy. For instance, I like these gold kookaburras. I like the design. The mintage is typically around 15,000, and each year the design changes. Does this mean everyone likes them? Hell no. These cost a little bit more than other 10th ounce gold bullion out there, but it doesn't matter to me because when they sell out, they are all sold out. Prices inevitably climb. I get these for me because I enjoy them. This brings us to an unfortunate topic within this topic. Some of you will ask about graded bullion as collectible coins. I have always said, do not buy graded bullion because it is not worth the extra premium. I still stand by that statement. I think graded bullion is one of the biggest rackets in the coin community and it is designed to get people to pay extra for a coin that shouldn't have an extra premium attached to it. This might piss off a few people, but hey, guess what? It's my opinion. My opinion just also happens to be tied with years of experience. For those who think I'm wrong, I want you to do a little test. Go on Instagram and within the gold and silver community, put up in your story that you wanna do a trade. Your trade is going to be a one ounce gold eagle for silver. So you're looking for silver. I guarantee you, folks will DM you trying to offload their graded silver bullion. What's funny is, those trying to offload this crap attach an extremely high value to each of their coins. Think Atmex pricing. You can do the same thing with silver and you will get a similar result. Graded bullion is so radioactive, even the owners of it don't want it. They are always willing to trade it away in hopes of yielding more metal based on perceived value. I own graded bullion, but only because the price it was purchased for was the same price or less compared to its ungraded counterpart. I have graded collectible gold, but that doesn't mean that I seek it out. If I can find a raw coin of the design I'm looking for, I'll go for it, as long as the price is right. But when it comes to collectible gold coins and grading, we start seeing huge price discrepancies between a perfect grade of the coin and its raw version. The graded coin will fetch a better sum as the years go on. That's one of the great things about collectible gold. A good majority of the time, the value of the collectible coin climbs as the years go on. For coins that you think will be highly collectible, it's advantageous to get them at the time of release rather than wait for them. If you wait, the price might rise to a level that doesn't seem worth it to you. This brings me to a few downsides of collectible gold. The first is buying. Collectible gold coins rarely start out near the price of regular bullion. It might be more than you're willing to spend considering its weight in gold. If you can get a collectible gold coin in the same ballpark as gold bullion, I say go for it. The second is selling. If you're selling to an LCS, I've noticed that they don't really take the collectability into account with the pricing that they give you, unless it's a fairly rare coin. And even then I wouldn't hold my breath. You don't want to buy collectible gold and sell to an LCS for barely above spots. Luckily, there are a few marketplaces where one can sell their collectible coin for what they value it for. This brings me to the third downside, and that is finding a buyer for your niche coin. 
What you collect might not be popular with a lot of folks, especially at the higher prices some of these coins command. Sure, you might have a vast marketplace like eBay at your disposal, but if that coin isn't popular, it often won't sell until the price adjusts. If you need to sell and it's an extremely niche coin, just know you might be forced to liquidate at an LCS. I get collectible gold because I enjoy variety and watching my investments grow in value outside the price of gold. Your time is your most precious asset and I appreciate you spending it here with me. If you're interested in other topics like this one, check out the other videos I have on my channel. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins and that is my two cents.